Hey everyone, I'm TH Pine and welcome to MHRD. What is MHRD you ask? I like to call it a do-it-yourself CPU tutorial. It released a few days ago on Steam and itch.io, it's a little cheaper on itch.io and this is what it looks like. It's completely text-based and it's about designing logic gates. If you don't know what a logic gate is, it's a small electronic component which is used in computers and most other electronic devices and it basically implements the logic of the device, so it tells the device what to do. And uh, in this game, you have to design them with a uh, hardware description language, which you can see here. Well, that's just a template. We have to fill this out to make the logic gate happen. This is the first level. The goal is to design a NOT gate. A NOT gate is a very simple logic gate. It only has one input and one output. You can see the little picture, quote unquote, ASCII picture, I guess, uh, on the, in the middle of the screen. I cannot point to it with the mouse pointer because I don't have a mouse pointer in this game, which is not a big deal because you don't need it for the, for the, uh, for the game, but it's... Quite unfortunate for the video because I cannot point to things, which is a little weird. Anyway, so you can see the picture down there. There's one input called in and one output called out. And below that, there's a truth table which tells you all the expected outputs for all the possible inputs. All inputs and outputs in this game are binary, so they can all always only have two different values, 0 or 1 or false and true if you want. And... Uh, as I said, the NOT gate is very simple, it just negates the input. So um, if the input is 0, the output has to be 1, and if the input is 1, the output has to be 0. So let's go over to the design tab and talk about the hardware description language. So it uh, it consists of, or every specification consists of four different um, sections. There's the input sections, a section which defines, defines the inputs, um, and the output section which defines the outputs. You don't have to write this down yourself, this is always there from the start of the level. Um, because this just comes from the specification tabs. The specific specification just tells you what inputs and outputs um, there sh uh, should there be. Uh, there should be. There should be. Should there. What? <laughs> Which inputs and outputs the device should have. And um, therefore the description language, the hardware description language, has written down those sections already. All you have to fill in is the parts sections and section and the wires section. The parts section defines, defines which parts or other parts are used for this logic gate. Because you build logic gates based on other logic gates and the wire section is there to um, define how all those inputs, outputs and parts are connected to each other and basically define how this device or this, uh, this component works. So um, let's let's try to implement the NOT gate, shall we? First, we have to we have to take a look at what parts we want to use. Right now, we because it's the beginning of the game, we only have one other part available, which is the NAND part. You can see it over here. A NAND part is a little bit more complex than the NOT part or NOT gate. Um, it's the negation of an AND gate. So an AND gate usually takes two inputs and it outputs a one if both inputs are, are 1 and 0 if at least one of the inputs is 0 or both inputs are 0. The, the NAND gate is the ne ne ugh, sorry, the NAND gate is the negation of that. So it outputs a 0 if both inputs are 1 and it outputs a 1 otherwise. You can see that fairly clearly in the truth table uh, down below. So take a moment and look at this if you don't know what a, how the NAND gate how a NAND gate works and now let's jump back to the NOT gate. And let's try to implement that. So in the parts section, you f you design you define all the parts you want to use. We want to use one NAND gate. So we can call that, for, first we have to write down the name for the part. We can name it however you want. We can call it auto if you want to. And then we write down the which part it is or what type of part it is. It's a NAND gate. We call it auto for now just to make clear. Like usually I would, I would call it NAND. Or maybe we could not call it NAND1. Let's do that. So it's NAND1. Um, you can have multiple NANDs. We, can, we could have multiple parts. So we could go like uh, NAND2 NAND. We don't need that for the solution though. So we, we just stick with one so far. Um, so in the, that's, that's the parts done. And now we have to connect the NAND gate and the inputs and the outputs um, to get the desired behavior. So let's start with um, connecting the input to the NAND. So you do that by typing in and then an arrow and then you go NAND dot in one NAND one. That's the name of the gate in one. So um, the the NAND, as you can could see, you can see here has two inputs. One is called in one, and one is called in two. And we just connected the input of the NOT gate to the input one of the NAND gate. So that's that's done. And, and now we're gonna connect the output um, of the NAND gate to the output of the NOT gate, which is just called out. And uh, now we have some basic logic uh, connected already. This is not gonna work, however. But let's let's demonstrate. So to to test your design, you press Control Enter, and uh, it fails because I'm mistyping. There we go. And then one. 
and it tells you or it, it shows you some test cases and um, the what what your device outputs and if that's the expected output or not. So you can see if there is a one on the input, our uh, part actually puts out the one in the output, which is is wrong. If you, if you take a look at the expected outputs here, uh, the expected output is zero, and we did output a one, so that's wrong, and therefore the test failed. Uh, we complete the other test, however, um, but it's not really useful if only half of the tests work. Um, all the tests have to complete. So um, to create a not gate, um, we actually need one more. Um, well, one more mechanic, I guess. Y besides the inputs, the outputs, and the parts, you have one more thing you can connect, and that's to uh, constants. You can connect zero or one. So what we can do is we can connect a one to NAND 1.in2, so to the other input of the non NAND, NAND gate. So this means that the input two of the NAND 1 gate will always be one. And while the input one of the NAND1 gate will depend on the input of the whole component. So if we um, execute this now, you see that it works. So why does this work? Well, oops, no, oh uh, yeah, okay, that was too quick. Anyway, we can show it here anyway. So uh, if you take a look at the NAND gate, so and let's, let's just imagine what we did with it. So we connected the out, uh, the, the in to the in one, a uh, one to the in two, and the out to the out. So basically, in two is always one. So if you take a look at the truth table, you only take a look at the second and the fourth row. And now we take the different inputs we have, which is zero and one, and uh, then this corresponds to the, if we, if we have input zero, that corresponds to line two, and if we have input one, that corresponds to line four. And you can see the expected output would be one and zero, which is exactly what we want for our not gate. So if we take a look at the not gate again, if we have a zero on the input, we want one on the output, and other way and the other way around. So as simple as that, isn't it? So that's how this game works. That's that's the core. Let just for to make uh, to make sure everyone understands how this works and give you a little more example. Let's do the next one as well. So next part is an AND gate. And the AND gate I explained it earlier is the negation of the NAND gate. Well, <laughs> that's that's double negation. So uh, the NAND gate is the negation of the AND gate. So the AND gate takes two inputs and it only outputs a one if both inputs are one or true. And um, uh, now for our design, we can use the NAND gates or we can use the NOT gate as well if we want to. So we can define a part called NOT one now, and not no one, yeah, NOT one. No one is good as well. Right? No, uh, not one, and, and and then we can use that as well because we complete that already, so we have that available as well. So you do you except for the NAND gate and one gate later, uh, one one part you get later on in the game. You um, design all the parts you use yourself. So you get pretty complex designs um, at the end of the game. I co I completed the game already, and. Uh, Basically, you wrote or you designed almost everything of it because the only thing that things that are given to you from the game are the NAND gate and, uh, as I said, one one design uh, which you get later. Um, so that's that's pretty cool actually. Uh, but I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later on. Let's let's first try to implement an, the AND gate. So I have to think actually. I didn't prepare. Uh, <laughs> how do you build an AND gate again? Uh, it's not that hard. Well, it's pretty easy actually because I. I accidentally said it earlier. The AND gate is the negation of an AND gate because the, neg the NAND gate is the negation of an AND gate, so the other way around that works as well, right? So we're actually just gonna do that. So we need a, a, a NOT gate to negate the NAND gate, which you need as well. So we make a NAND one and a NOT one. And um, now we just wire up the NAND one with the inputs of the AND. So in, well, let's go in the next line, in one goes to NAND1 in 1 and um, in 2 goes to NAND1 in 2 and um, then we do NAND1 out goes to the input of the NOT gate and then the output of the NOT gate goes to the output of the AND gate. There we go. And uh, if we run this and I didn't do anything wrong there we go, we have an end gate, all tests pass. Pretty easy, um, because those are the first few levels. <laughs> so this should should not be too hard, and it isn't. Well, it kind of is for some people. I, I know that, it's not hard for me because I learned this stuff um, <laughs> in school. So <clears throat> that's a little unfair to compare, I guess. But anyway, this is basic electronic engineering. If you have 
learn anything about um, electronic engineering, you, you learned this stuff already. And it will continue like this for the next few levels. So basically until the end of the game, to be honest, but it gets a little bit more advanced later on. But pretty much if you had a, a, a basic electronic engineering course, you actually did most of the tasks of this game already in this course. Um, because you just build regular gates. You build the, the, the basic ones and not um, uh, NAND and stuff like that. Uh, or X or and later on you build registers and, and stuff like that, and um, it gets a little bit more complex, but you build a lot of very, very regular parts, which makes sense, because the last level of this game, the last level, um, is about building a CPU, and it's actually um, very similar, or I think it's pretty much exactly how a real CPU works, so that's why I called this game earlier a do-it-yourself CPU tutorial, because it actually tells you and teaches you how to build your own CPU on the logic level, not like on a hardware level, but on the logic level. So if you if you have um, the smallest part, the NANDs, or um, available to you, you can the game actually tells you almost exactly how to build a CPU yourself, which is pretty cool, in my opinion. Um, because that's actually how, how this stuff works. And, and this is also why um, the NAND part is available to you from the beginning. Um, if you have any electro had any electronic engineering course ever, then you probably know this already, but basically all the other logic gates can be built out of um, just NAND gates. Or, or I, there, there's one other part, I think the NOR gate is the one, another one. Um, there, there are two different uh, there are two different possibilities for um, for uh, one base logic gate, and you can build all the other ones um, out of the other one. So um, in reality, um, people go there and design this NAND part in a very very efficient small like a very very small efficient way out of silicon and iron. I think I believe if I remember correctly, and uh, you make this very very small and efficient, and then you can build all the other things just out of this very very small efficient part by connecting them correctly. And that's how building a CPU works. And the game demonstrates that very well. It has one major flaw because, as I mentioned, it actually um, gives you one other part later on, which is not technically not necessarily uh, necessary. I think it's because how the game is implemented. So the, the, the designer or developer of the game um, thought, like he, he came to that point where he wanted to give you a, a part that is delay. That's a delay, basically. It's a, a D flip flop. It, it just... Um, takes one input and outputs the input after a certain delay, after one clock cycle. And uh, all the earlier parts are sequential, uh, are non -sequ uh, sequential, are stateless. So um, there's only one state, like to every exact, or to every input, there's one exact expected output. Um, but later on, these specifications become a little bit more complex and you get like uh, non-stateless or um, state-aware parts. So it's something that can save a value and later change it or output the value later or, or something like that. Or, or combine, save a value, then take another value, add it, um, um, uh, add it to the first one and then output that or something like that. Um, like it, it, it can save a state. And uh, this is all based on the on the DFF, the um, D flip flop, which is basically just a delay for one cycle, and that one is given to you. And you could build that yourself with with regular logic gates. That's actually possible and not that hard either. Um, but uh, I think the developer of this game came to the point where he wanted to give you that. But the way he implemented the uh, the, the game. Um, the, the game engine, it didn't allow him easily to to give you the possibility to, to build that yourself. That's a little convoluted explanation. But anyway, it makes sense in my head. I hope you somehow you, you somewhat understand what I'm talking about. So I think the developer came to a technical limitation of his code, um, which he used to implement this game, which made him make the decision to just give you the DFF instead of letting you design it yourself. But all the other parts are designed by yourself. And in the end, you have a um, well, a working CPU design, really, which is pretty cool and uh, gives you that feeling of, like, it really helps you to understand how computers work. And for me, this was not really new. Well, the last part, the last few levels were, but all the, like, 80% of the game were not really new to me because I had some basic electronic engineering courses. But I remember, I like, I, I got memories of that feeling when back then I started to understand how a computer really works. Because today you look at a computer and you know, yeah, it somehow works with zeros and ones, but it doesn't, like, most people don't really understand how that works. They don't get the concept. And 
uh, just un knowing that there is like a very small electronic part that works as a NAND gate and based on that NAND gate you can build everything else and doing it yourself like in an electronic course or in, in this game um, really gives you that feeling of the understanding, uh, the, the understanding of how the whole stuff comes together and that's a pretty cool experience in my opinion. However, that also means if you had that experience already because you had a basic electronic engineering course and I guess most of the target audience for this game probably had, um, then this game will not be as as interesting to you because you did all of that already. As I said, I, I knew all the solutions, well, I didn't knew all the solutions, but I saw all the solutions before. I had to come up with them again because I didn't remember all of them, but I, I know, I, I had the feeling, yeah, I did that before. I know how that works in general. Um, except for the last two or three um, levels where you actually build the last parts to get the CPU done. Uh, which was uh, pretty interesting. However, the last parts are the mo one of the most interesting, but also one of the most, um, well, disappointing ones, I guess, kind of, because they, they're they pretty hand-holdy, especially the last one is, is super hand-holdy. It actually tells you which parts you should use in the CPU and how, how they, sh not how they should be connected, but how they should interact with each other. It gives you pretty, pretty detailed explanation. And I think the reason for that is that the developer uh, like it's pretty hard to come up with the, come up with this concept on your own, so the developer wanted to give you um, to help you make it possible for everyone to to complete that level. Uh, I think he he did put a little too much like he he did a, he did it too much uh, the level does it too little too much uh, hand holding, but it's still interesting to see how this all works out and design your own CPU. So that's pretty cool. Overall, I took like, I think two and a half hour to play this game, uh, to complete the game or something. So it's not super long. However, I, as I said, I have some experience in this stuff. So I was not, I was not taking too much time for every level. Um, so um, yeah, what, what else is there? Let's, let me show you a little bit more of the game. So there are some, some story elements. You get a briefing, you basically, your um, your employee at a new company called, uh, <laughs> um, what's it called? Microhard. Yeah, that's, that's, Maybe, maybe a reference to Microsoft. I'm not sure. Probably not. And <laughs> yeah, you, you're a new employee and you're supposed to design that CPU and uh, the CPU for them. And that's the goal of the game and the last level, as mentioned. And you unlock more briefings down the line. And actually, you will not um, complete all the designs because there are a bunch of designs which are fairly similar to each other. They just work a little different. Um, and uh, you will get an assistant who will complete the similar ones for you. So you design one of them and then he's design, he comp or fills in the other ones so you don't have to do repetitive tasks. That's that's actually pretty well done, I think. Uh, that's a pretty good a good idea um, from a designer. And you also have this manual, which, which actually introduces to the whole game. It's... Uh, if you know, if you if you watch my well, uh, like if you know my channel and watch my other videos, you you know that I'm a sucker for good tutorials. And I have to say, this manual and tutorial, quote unquote, uh, is not is not bad. It's actually pretty decent. It's not amazing because it's not really interactive. The tutorials, like there's an introduction which gives you an overview. Then there is um, uh, the and then there's this tutorial which basically is two examples which you can play around with. It's not really a tutorial. It's more like two sandboxes uh, with some code in there already, which with some comments which explains you what, how it works and what it does. And um, it, it's not really a tutorial, but it's pretty well done and pretty well written in my opinion. And, and that's why this is okay, I think. It's, it would be pretty hard to make a really interactive tutorial for this game and probably doesn't make much sense. So um, yeah, and then you get syntax specification over here and some some uh, paragraphs on some more advanced topics. Even though I found this topic very confusing because I feel it doesn't really line up with the, how the game works, which is a little weird. It explains how a NAND gate is delayed and therefore creates sequential sequential logic. Um, maybe I misread it, but you basically you don't need to know anything besides that until you encounter the DFF and then. It explain it's explained again anyway, so you don't really need this section, I think, and it confused me a little bit at, in the beginning. But that might just have been me. I'm not sure. Anyway, there's also this, uh, which gives you, uh, yeah, it teaches you about binary numbers, which is useful if you're not familiar with those and how those work. So it has gives you a pretty good basis on, like, a pretty good, well catalog of, of tutorials and explanations. And I think tutorial is, the, 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 the manual is pretty decently done. It's not amazing, but it gives, it's a pretty good introduction course for just being a written piece of text. So that's pretty good. 
Um, let's take a look at the settings menu, shall we? So the settings menu is very, very minimal. Like the, the game works very well. Like it's pretty slick. The controls are good. There's a lot of information on the screen, like hotkeys. There's auto completion and stuff. That works pretty well. There's only I've only found one bug, which is pretty minor. Wait, let me see if I can demonstrate it. Basically, if you if you uh, now I cannot. I need a specification which I can scroll down. I don't think I have one of those. But basically, there's a bug if you with the scrolling for of the specification tab. It doesn't matter really, though. It's it's very very minor. But besides that, the game works very well, very slick. The only um, complaint I have there's not much options. You don't have resolution options. It's only running in full screen. There's no way of turning it into window mode. Not even Alt Enter is switching it to window mode, which is very really, fairly annoying. Um, and uh, the options are very very limited, as you can see. Also, the sound design is pretty boring or terrible, which is why I turn it off. Uh, let's turn it on really quick. Um, uh, it doesn't let me. There we go. Um, I hope you can hear this. There's a background noise now. It basically is. It, it simulates your like when you start a game. It, it um, there is a, like a fake OS coming up, and it basically is supposed to simulate. I think at least uh, like a fake computer, uh, an old one, and. Uh, it does this by having this background noise, which sounds like an old computer, and also have key key sounds, um, which simulate the sound a keyboard would make. But the thing is, I'm sitting on a computer already and using a keyboard already, so I have those sounds already. Okay, not that loud because my computer is not that loud because it's not that old school, and my keyboard is not that loud either because it's not an old mechanical... Well, mechanical keyboards are not ne necessarily old, but my keyboard is not mechanical, and therefore both of them aren't very quiet. Uh, so yeah, this that's something, but it's still weird, and it's also there's no music. I think music would be good for this game, and, and therefore I turned, uh, I I decided to just turn the sound off because it's just annoying. And also there are two color schemes, which is cute, but still it, I would prefer to have proper options, like at least resolution and window mode, please. That would be great. Um, you can make it matrix style, or you can make it yellow, which which is fancy, but I I find both of them pretty hard to read, so I stick to the white one um, and you can reset the progress of the game which is actually necessary because there's one other technical limitation the game doesn't let you change your old designs um, so you cannot come back to a level so if you take a look at the not gate now we can go in here and we can take a look at it uh, but we cannot change it anymore which is a shame in my opinion because often there are multiple ways of implementing something and you you, you cannot uh, that's especially true like, if you put in an extra part here, because in the beginning of the design you think, oh yeah, maybe I need this part, and later down it turns out you don't need it, but you completed the game level already, you, you have no way of getting rid of it. Which doesn't hurt, it doesn't matter, but it's still a little weird, because if you take a look like uh, on that design, you see that part there, which is not actually useful for anything, and that's a little confusing, I think. And yeah, also there's no no like there's no scoring system whatsoever, uh, which is kind of like you don't necessarily need that kind of stuff. And I think the developer was not like that. That was not his goal. But I think the game would actually benefit from having some sort of optimization um, thingy going on, especially for replayability. You could you could optimize for parts used, for example. That would probably be a good optimization score. Um, I'm not sure if you could come up with something else. Uh, maybe wires used maybe but that's probably a little silly but you could go for parts used which even makes sense like if you go back to the realistic approach because if the less parts you use the cheaper the part is which and the smaller as well which are both uh, very important factors for real computers so i think the developer really missed out at not having that in here and so what i would would like to see probably not happen the game's not in early access it's done already but what i i'm missing from the game in my opinion is the way to come back to your old solution and optimize optimizing them and you cannot do that for two reasons because a there's an optimization score and b you cannot come back to your old solutions which is why i had to reset the game to show you the first few levels which means i cannot show you the last few levels now which is probably good because spoilers but anyway um it's it's a little unfortunate design decision in my opinion um so yeah there's that anyway overall i think the game is a pretty cool idea it's implemented decently. It's not an amazing game. I think my resolution for this is very similar to what I said in my video about the human, res human resource machine. Is that the name? It's just one programming game with the office people. Um, it's it's good at what it does. It's decent well it, and well implemented. It's not great though. It's not an excellent puzzle game. Um, but since the, the genre 
of this game. Like, there is very small. There are not many other games that do the same thing as this game. But I, I don't. I can't. Be, well, I can come can come up with one which is somewhat similar, but it's on a different level actually. Um, so there's still a reason to recommend the game, even though it's just like well, not mediocre, but just good and not very good. And usually I go for very good games because there are so many games um, available that. It makes sense to just pick out the very good ones, but since this genre is very small, it makes sense to take a look at the just just good games as well. I think, and I think this this falls in this category. It's it's good. It's not excellent. It's not brilliant. It's not like super amazing, uh, but it's good at what it does. And um, there aren't many other games like this. And the only other one I cannot come up with, which is similar, but as I said, on a different level, is. Uh, Constructor Engineer of the People by Tektronix. Tektronix are the guy who do, who do uh, who did Space Cam and Infinite Factory and TS100, Chance and IO. All those great, really, really great programming puzzle games. Um, and uh, they have one really, really old game. It's called uh, Constructor Engineer of the People, as I said. And it's basically very similar to this. Like, the goal is very similar. You design logic, not really logic, you, you design logic devices, I guess. You have an input and then an expected output. It's a little bit more complex on the input and output um, because, like, it has sequences you have to match. Like, it's an input sequence and an output sequence. And um, the thing about that game is that you don't have logic parts. You just have silicon and iron and you have to figure out the rest. <laughs> and it has the worst tutorial ever. Um, so, yeah, but it's a pretty great game. Like, Basically, my history of electronic engineering was I had one course in school, which was pretty mind-opening, I guess. It had this big aha moment where I said, oh, that's how this stuff works. And then years later, I found Constructor Engineer of the People, um, and and I used what I learned back then to build those electronic circuits uh, to solve that game, and basically had the, uh, this this aha moment again because um, I forgot most of the stuff, and that was pretty cool. And now I had it again in a, in a like a little smaller, like it's not as effectful anymore. But again, I had this moment. Oh, that's how this works. And the 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 one extra thing this game did is it showed me how a CPU works in the end, actually, and that that was pretty cool. That was good to see. I mean, I, in general, I know how a CPU works somewhat but not on that de level of detail i guess and um so that's that's pretty cool but still i think like the the, the, the big difference between this one and constructor engineer of the people besides being on a different level because this is about logic gates and the other one is about silicon um <clears throat> is that um this one the, the other one it felt more like a real puzzle game you have tasks like specific tasks and you have to get some like arbitrary tasks like gamey tasks with gamey solutions and this one is you build things that you d would do in your engineering course as well like this is not really did no, none of those parts are interesting per se except for maybe the last one the cpu and and the parts you use for that those are somewhat interesting but they're not like not something like you could um like I don't know something crazy like there's nothing nothing fancy it's just like a lot in logic gate and there's very very specific um very I, i'm 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 struggling for words what i'm trying to say is that this is this game doesn't really feel like a game it more feels like a teaching device and that's not necessarily bad but it it's that's why i would not consider it being a good puzzle game it's just like it's an interesting experience definitely and it can be uh pretty good at teaching this these concepts as well i think um however the the that you design well i'll talk about that in a moment let me finish this thing, this thought process first so it can be good at, at teaching those th those things but it's not like a super fun um puzzle game experience especially because it doesn't really feel like a game because all those tasks are very non-gamey um to put it that way for the for the lack of a better word um the one thing which makes this not so great as a teaching tool is the way you put in the the things like the the, the hardware description language um, this would be way easier with the graphical interface, where you just drag and drop the things and connect them with clicks. That would be way, way easier and way, way more straightforward to understand and more approachable. Um, I mean, the the hardware description language has its charm, but it's it's not really practical. It doesn't make the game better. I think um, the game itself recommends you to use a pen and a paper and write down your your, your designs and then uh, translate them into the the hardware description language. I mean, it's it's cool flair wise, but in the end, it's busy work um, because the real 
the real puzzle solving happens on the paper. Well, I did most of the stuff in my head, but I'm a little crazy when it comes to this kind of stuff. Um, most, I think a lot of people will, will design it on paper or look up the designs on the internet because those are the general designs you, you use. <laughs> so, um, so the last step is just translating the design into this description language, which is busy work, as I said. And it is, the, the design language is not very good at showing you or like how the thing works. It's not easy to understand, easy to read, easy to write. It's nothing easy about this description language actually. And yeah, I, that's that's the only thing. But for me, that was it's actually kind of good that this was here because if this would just be about connecting the wires, um, then that would be exactly what I did years ago in my electronic engineering course. So that would probably be even more boring. So. I guess that's the upside of the description language. I had to learn how the description language works and how to use it and stuff like that. So yeah, I think I think that's it. If you're if you're inter interested in this game and um, you should, I hope you're, you're able to tell this by now after I talk for what's that? Thirty minutes about a text-based game. <laughs> um, I hope you, you you have an idea if you're interested in this kind of stuff now, or if you're not the target audience. Um, I will link down. I will link the. I will link uh, the Construct Engine of the People in the description below if you're interested in that as well. Definitely great game. Uh, check it out. Um, but if you're interested in this one, as I said earlier, it's available on Steam and itch.io. I will link both in the description below. The itch.io version is a little cheaper, uh, for some reason, and um, yeah. It's called HMRD, which is no MHRD, which is the short handle for MicroHard, which is the company you're working for. And um, I'm TH Pine. Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate that you took your time to watch my video. That's always cool. Uh, if you liked the video, feel free to subscribe. Um, I make more videos like this, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, well, yeah. Thanks all for watching. Have fun and see you next time.